my gosh. I've been waiting to go to this park for so many years now. This is crazy. This is probably my biggest major amusement park I had not been to in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at Six Flags Great America here in Gurney, Illinois. Not to be confused with Six Flags America in Maryland, of course. This park is a whole lot bigger than that one. And already I'm wondering how in the world am I supposed to tackle this all in one day? There are 15 roller coasters to get on. I'm not expecting it to be quiet either. It is a Tuesday in the summer and there's so much to do here. Oh my gosh. I think I know what I want to do first, which is going to be Max Force because it's a very unreliable ride and I have just seen it running. So while I have the chance, I definitely want to make sure to do that. It's kind of like the Top Thrill Dragster King to Kaha effect where you see it running and you run on over, you know? This is such an iconic view that I've seen for years. It's the iconic double-deckered carousel they have, American flags aligning the midway. This is going to be a great park. I already know I'm going to really enjoy all the rides here. So yeah, we're definitely going to head to Max Forest first. The line doesn't seem to be too bad, even though I arrived a little bit after open. So yeah, let's get on it. All right, I've been waiting in Max Force's station for about 35 minutes after a delay because of weather, and I wanted to talk about this a little bit because this is very interesting what's going on. So first of all, the posted wait time before I got in line was 20 minutes. I ended up taking over an hour to get to where I am now, which is I was about to get on the very front row for Max Force. A lady actually asked me if I wanted to risk the ride breaking down to get on the front or if I wanted to just be put in the middle right away. And I was like, I'm, I'm risking, I'm waiting, because I knew that I wanted to do the front row for my first ride. Looking back, that probably wasn't the wisest decision, but if the ride reopens soon, I still think that would be worth the wait. Max Force is an unreliable launch coaster, so that makes sense, but what's interesting to me is that they closed all of their other major coasters to implement weather as well. What kind of major amusement park closes all of their coasters due to some drizzling? That is very strange, and it's not even the case at other Six Flags parks. Fortunately, it does seem like it's clearing up now, so hopefully it's only a matter of time before it's back up. Hey, we finally got some testing. It is actually still drizzling, but it, it's, it's extremely light at this point. Oh my God, we got him. I am so nervous. God, I finally got on Max Force after literally three and a half hours since the parks opened. That was the first ride I got on. Was it worth the wait? I don't know. That was kind of frustrating, but the ride itself definitely met expectations. I first want to talk about that launch. In the front row, that is probably one of the best coaster elements I have ever experienced. It doesn't feel like a launch, actually. It's very unique. It's um, It pretty much feels like you're teleporting across the launch track. As far as the rest of the ride, I wouldn't say it was better than I expected or worse than I expected. It was about on par. That one inversion is really crazy, that heartline roll. The rest of it's all right. I mean, it, it has some hang time for sure, but you know, you know what I think of hang time. But still, I mean, the coaster is really fun. It is very short, but actually the length didn't really bother me all that much. I was kind of surprised. And you know, that's been the case with me for, when it comes to like top real drag, searching the car. It's the length has never really bothered me in rides like this because the adrenaline is just so insane. So it's like, it's still worth it, you know? You get a bang for your buck. I also made the decision while in line that I was going to purchase a flash pass gold, which basically cuts down your wait times 50% as well as waiting times without actually being in the line itself. So I think that'll really come in handy and it'll make it much more likely for me to get all 15 of these coasters in today. So let's go grab that and yeah, I don't know what we'll be doing next, but I'm so happy we got on Max Force. That was a great coaster. Oh, I'm so excited for the wizard. So this is an ace landmark, an absolute classic by Schwarzkopf, one of the only rides of its kind in the world. And there's a very interesting story about this ride because they were actually going to get rid of it, but all the fans of the park were like, no, we don't want you to get rid of wizard. It's so classic. It's so unique. So instead they got rid of their uh, looping coaster shockwave, 
and um, kept this instead. And still, after all these decades, it remains in the park, which is so awesome. And I have to shout out Six Flags Great America for maintaining this ride, as well as several other unique coasters as well. You actually have an intimate impulse here too, which is really cool. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna walk through the Flash Pass entrance now because I just got that activated. That should really make the day so much better. And it doesn't seem like a whole a lot of other people got Flash Pass, so it should be really cool. Spiral lift hill, so unique. Oh my gosh, you don't see those very often at all. All clear? Everyone get ready because this ride goes upside down. Not once, not twice, but zero times. Enjoy your ride. Check this out, we're in a single file seating arrangement. It's very unique and we're on a spiral lift hill right now. So weird, but I love it. I'm actually so, so, so excited for Wizard. I mean, this ride has so much history to it. And when the ride dispatched, the ride up said, sometimes it rains, sometimes it snows. What even is a Wizard? No one really knows. That is the cutest thing ever. I love that so much. Anyways, here we go. Down the first shallow drop of the Wizard. Oh, this is so cute. Here we go. It's totally like a, it totally feels like a short chuck. So fun. It's like, it has that jank to it. It's really awesome. Whoa, here we go. Whoa, right up against the ground. Oh my gosh. And we're around the lip tool, kind of like Zambezi Zinger used to do at Worlds of Fun. The original. Oh yeah. This is so cool. Whoa! It's so jank and like in the best way possible. And into the brakes. What a special ride. That was great. I would definitely love to do that again at some point. Just got off of the Wizard, and that was a very special family coaster. I'm so pleased to have ridden that. You know, as an enthusiast, we love getting on the biggest and baddest coasters, but one thing that I've always loved doing is getting on very unique coasters as well, and that is certainly no exception. That is a very, very unordinary ride, and it's for that reason that I think I like it as much as I do. drop in the back yes we do oh my god wow oh. It's not one of the best B&M Hybers, but the reason being is it doesn't have the quantity of airtime as the others, but the airtime it does have are really good moments. So that was a great ride. I really enjoyed that a lot. All right, I think a lot of you guys are gonna be pretty happy to hear this, but I was definitely impressed by Raging Bull. That was a great ride. Is it one of the best B&M Hybers? In my opinion, absolutely not, just because it doesn't have the quantity of airtime as some of the others. But I also wouldn't say it was at the bottom for me at all, because the few airtime moments this does have are some really great moments. In the back row, those drops were so fun. So to me, it's definitely a mid-tier B&M Hyper, which is not at all a bad thing. I was really impressed. That was a great time. I would definitely do that again.
One ride that it doesn't look like we'll be getting on today is the classic aerodynamics looping coaster Demon. Now, as much of a shame as it is to miss such a historic ride, I did get to do the Demon at California's Great America, so it's not as big of a loss. If I had to choose like what coasters I would want to be closed, if I had to, I would definitely put Demon towards the top of the list. So I'm not totally upset about that, and it seems like every other coaster in the park is running, which when you have 15 coasters, that's still really impressive, so I'm happy with that for sure. Up next, it seems that we're going to be doing Viper, which is a very unique ride because of the fact that it was built by Six Flags themselves, kind of the same way that Cedar Fair did the Beast on their own. This is a Six Flags only project. Why they did that, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how it rides. Really cool entrance sign too, by the way. Really enjoy that. All right, it's time for Viper, the park's wooden roller coaster. Actually, they have a lot of wooden coasters, but this is the one that Six Flags built themselves, which makes it a very unique attraction. Now, this actually has a knockoff layout of the Coney Island Cyclone, which is one of my favorite wooden coasters ever, so I actually think this has a lot of potential. Slow down way at the top. Here we go. Definitely not the smoothest there, but not the worst. Whoa! This thing is weird. the beginning but it actually started to smoothen out a little bit more towards the end so that was interesting it actually got better and better and yeah it certainly has some really strong airtime moments actually really good floater that was really fun it had a few rough moments but generally was okay and i really enjoyed the airtime too up next is going to be X-Flight, which is the only B&M wing coaster Six Flags ever installed. This looks to be a really fun ride. It's a bit on the smaller side for a wing coaster, but it doesn't matter because it is still a wing coaster and I really enjoy the model. I have never ridden a wing coaster that I got off and was like, yeah, that sucked. They're all really, really fun. I also wanted to point out that this region of the country is stacked for wing coasters. I mean, I feel like no one talks about this. You have Thunderbird not super far away, Gatekeeper not super far from there, and, and same with Dollywood, Wild Eagles not super far from there. Yeah, this will be a fun ride. I can't wait to do it. Climbing up the lift hill on X-Flight, it's actually a pretty short wing coaster in terms of the height. Like, we're already up at the top. But the layout looks really fun and so does the pace, so I look forward to this. Let's do it. Just a gatekeeper yesterday. Let's see how this compares. Whoa! Well, the near misses were certainly great. That, I think those were the best near misses of any wing coaster I've been on. But man, that was the shakiest wing coaster I've done. I've, I haven't done many B&Ms that are shaky, but this was one of those. That kind of rattled your brain around in some sections. And I am on an outside seat, so that didn't help either. 
All right, just had a nice meal at Johnny Rockets, and up next is American Eagle, the park's Intamin wooden coaster. Yes, you heard that right. It says only the red side is operating today, but I am fine with that because honestly, I wasn't even expecting this to be operating today. That was until I realized that in the 2023 season so far, the ride only opens at 1.30 p.m. Now, not only was this one of Intamin's first ever roller coasters, but what's interesting about this ride is it's a very old coaster and it doesn't really have a place in this park's lineup anymore. And I don't mean that in a way where I'm saying the ride's not good, because it very well could be. But it's a little redundant. They have several other wooden roller coasters and a lot of people want this ride to either be RMC'd, which I'm not sure what I think of. I mean, I'm sure the layout would be amazing, but Goliath is right nearby, so it would be kind of an odd fit. Other people think they should give the whole thing Titan track or do something to smoothen it out and renovate it. That's the route I think they should take. I think they should keep the coaster because of how it's historic and everything, but, you know, smoothen it out, make it a more comfortable ride experience. But yeah, here we are, American Eagle. I cannot wait to check this thing out. All right, we've made it onto American Eagle. This lift hill is so jank. And I think this layout's gonna be jank too. I can't believe this was an intimate, is what's blowing my mind. So this ride opened in the 70s. It's an absolute icon for this park, but the structure is ginormous. It's deteriorating. It visually looks super old. All right, I am in the front row to mitigate the roughness, so hopefully it's not too bad of an experience. A lot of people actually really love this ride, so let's find out why. Here we are. Awesome. Okay, we just got off of the legendary American Eagle. That is a super weird ride, but I actually had a really good time with it. I thought that was so fun. It was funny, the ride-up called it like Viper's older brother or something. And I was I was like, yeah, that actually does make sense. Like they ride in a relatively similar manner. But this is more intense. This actually had a good chunk of airtime. I was really impressed by that. It's not too rough in the front row at all, even though it looks like it's deteriorating and falling apart. Speaking of wooden coasters, up next is gonna be Goliath, which is my most anticipated ride in the park. I'm not sure why I saved it for so late in the day, but nevertheless, I cannot wait to do it. And something that a lot of people don't talk about is this is actually a huge Rocky Mountain construction coaster. It's a lot bigger than people make it out to be. So let's give it a ride. One of four wooden coasters RMC ever built. You can kind of see it a little bit behind there. It's gonna be great. See if I like the front or the back more. Pretty stoked for this. Let's go. Oh 
man, this drop is huge. I've just gotten two rides in on Goliath, once in the very back, once in the very front, and that is a fantastic roller coaster. If you ask me, that's clearly the best ride in the park. I am very, very impressed. It's definitely not one of the stronger RMCs, but it's a great ride. There's lots of standout moments on it. Now, again, like Raging Bull, not a huge quantity of airtime compared to other RMCs, but the airtime it has are excellent moments. And I know some people have a hard time calling that a wooden roller coaster, but if you do call it a Woody, I think it has the best inversion on a Woody I've ever been on, which is that zero-g stall. Easily one of the best zero-g stalls, right up there with Air Force One and Zadra. If there is a downside, the ride is a little bit shaky in some sections, particularly at the bottom of the drop, but it's not enough to take away from the ride. It's a fantastic coaster, and I had a load of fun with it. Anyways, my GoPro is at the verge of its death, so what I'm going to do is start to just record some off-ride shots for you guys on my phone. We've already gotten all the major rides out of the way. There's just a few minor ones left, and then I do want to do some re-rides on Max Force and Goliath as well. But yeah, this park has grown on me so much throughout the day. Obviously, I had a rough start with Max Force and the whole situation revolving around that ride, but since I got the Flash Pass, things have really picked up, and this park's lineup is truly unbelievable. They are so loaded with coasters, it's unfair. So up next, we're going to do the Flash, Vertical Velocity, and Impulse coaster by Intamin, one of the last in the world. Cannot wait to do one of these again. It's been a while. This is a great ride and an underrated model for sure. The launches are really intense and I love the spikes. It is a short ride, but it packs a dang good punch. All right, so I went ahead and did a lot of the cloned coaster models that you can find across the Six Flags chain, ending out with Superman Ultimate Flight. After this, there's 45 minutes until park close, so I think I'm gonna try to do Raging Bull one more time in the back row and then Max Forest once more in the front row. Okay, I just ran a Max Force, so we should be able to get on it for our last ride of the day, 30 minutes after close, because the line's currently 30 minutes. Oh, this is going to be so fun if we get on this. Hopefully it doesn't pull up SNS and break. All right, I'm just now wrapping up a day here at Six Flags Great America in Illinois, and this park really did impress me. I had a little bit of a rough start with Max Force and everything that happened with that, but literally everything after that point went well. The rides are, are amazing here. The coaster lineup is so deep. Honestly, it's one of the best coaster lineups I've ever seen at a theme park. The park looks good, the food's solid. Like, there's nothing inherently bad about this park. It could use a little bit of a cleanliness upgrade like all the Six Flags parks, but for a Six Flags, this is at the absolute top of its game. You ask me where it ranks in the chain, I say easily top three and the only ones I might prefer are Fiesta Texas and Magic Mountain. And that's saying something because I don't really think they have one standout coaster. I think their best coaster is Goliath. They have a really strong top three and then an amazing supporting lineup. So in the future, I would love to see them get that one truly ultra elite coaster, but still their lineup is so, so, so good. Anyways, tomorrow we'll be heading to Wisconsin for our new park. This is Mount Olympus for one of my top bucket list coasters for years, which is Hades 360. I cannot wait to ride it. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for watching today's vlog.